Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons. This is a video that I'm putting together for Professor Galagos. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. His first name is Umberto. Uh, anyways, he asked me to put together a couple videos for his uh, surveying students. So I'm going to do two videos for him. This first video, I'm going to talk about test taking strategy for the LSIT or the fundamentals of surveying exam and then kind of some lessons learned from the exam. So hopefully I will have some good advice for you students. Uh, I want to give you a disclaimer right here at the beginning of the video. I only took the test one time. <laughs> so, and it was a long time ago. So, you know, take my advice with a grain of salt. I'm not an expert by any means. Um, and I also probably barely passed. So, <laughs> so uh, that's a, that's a disclaimer. You have to consider that. Uh, I will also tell you that the LSIT exam, the Fundamentals of Surveying exam, is, uh, in my opinion, maybe more difficult than the uh, LS exam. Um, it covered a much wider range of topics, programming, spelling and grammar, basic science, and uh, it was it was very broad, and it was a hard test. Um, I'm not going to tell you it was an easy test, because it wasn't. So it'd probably be one of the hardest things to do in your life, passing that exam. So... Let's go over some test taking strategies. Um, here's some tips for the LSIT. And I've got, how many I got here? I got six, six tips. Number one, know your definitions. A lot of the questions on the LSIT are based on definition of terms. So know your terms. There is a book. It's a cool book from ACSM that has surveying definitions in it. I was just looking at my bookshelf behind you to see if I have it. I don't think I have it here, uh, but it's a good book. Definition of surveying terms, you should definitely pick that up and try and get familiar with those terms. Maybe do some flashcards. Uh, second tip, know your calculator. Uh, lots of math on the LSIT. Be familiar with calculator. Uh, don't walk in there to take the exam and with a brand new calculator that you've never used because that will hurt you. Tip number three, this is going to be hard for the OCD perfectionists among you, but skip the hard questions. Every question is worth the same. Uh, one point. So skip those hard questions and come back to them at the end when you have time. A lot of the exam is about time management. Uh, that's probably even more true with the LS than it is the LSIT, but uh, time management is important. A lot of people don't finish the exam. If you're going to run out of time, you want to get as many correctly answered questions as you can before you, before you do run out of time. So do those easy questions first, man. Zip through there, get all the, you know, do the ones that are definitions if those are easy for you. You know, do the boundary ones if those are easy. If you do, if construction's easier, do the construction questions. And then, you know, save the hard ones for the end. Uh, if you got a question that you think is going to take more than two or three minutes of math, skip it. Come back and do it at the end. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that is tip number three. I think there are probably some people that fail the LSIT because they just try and tackle that thing sequentially and they get hung up on some hard questions and they just run out of time. Don't be that person. Tip number four, if you're like me and you get numbers backwards, so I'm, I'm dyslexic, more, probably more than mildly dyslexic, uh, skip the math questions uh, because it's multiple choice. And um, if you do your math wrong, you're not going to have the right answer, more than likely. So uh, if you're dyslexic, skip the math questions, finish them at the end. And then if you're dyslexic, sometimes you got to run your, if it's a simple calc, run it twice. Make sure you didn't flip any numbers. You know, the nice thing about multiple choice test is if you get, if you do your math and you get to the end and, and your, your answer isn't in the options, the numbered list there or the lettered list, um, you probably made a math mistake. Go back and run your calc again. Uh, if you do your math and the answer's there and you feel pretty comfortable with it, then, uh, then you might not have to run your calculation twice. But if you're like me and you're dyslexic, you might have to run some of your simple calcs twice. Uh, let's see. Be prepared. There is no substitute for hard work and study. That's it. That There's no getting around that, guys. You just, it's a hard test and it takes work. Do not cram a week before the exam or even two weeks before the exam and then go in and think you're going to pass. Uh, now, some of you guys are really smart and you might be able to do that, but most of you won't. Um, and even if you are smart, you're rolling the dice with that approach. And I know people that do that. They like take the week off before the test and they try and cram their brain. I, I don't recommend that. I'd much rather see you take an hour a week for a year before you take the exam than take a hundred hours the week before the test. There's just a limit to how much the human brain can absorb. 
So I encourage you be prepared, have a good program, a weekly program, even if it's, maybe you can't do an hour a week, maybe it's 30 minutes a week. 30 minutes a week is better than 100 hours a week for the test, in my opinion. Um, and if you can do two hours a week, do two hours. You know, cut some TV and video games out, guys. You gotta make time for this. Um, and you're gonna feel really good. It's gonna be worth the investment when you go in there and you slam that test and you walk out of that room feeling really good. Um, that was not how the LSAT went for me, but I did feel good like that when I walked out of my LS exam. So it's a great feeling when you're prepared and you smash it. Um, just a, This is kind of a, to go along with that be prepared comment, we're not always in test taking mode. You know, if, if I tried to take the LSIT today, I would probably fail it. If I tried to take the LS exam today, I would almost certainly fail it. That doesn't mean I'm not a good surveyor, guys. It's just I'm not in test taking mode and I haven't been for years. There's a certain mode your brain gets into, I think, um, when you're preparing for an exam. Practice exam questions. Practice run practice problems every week the year before the exam, that will keep your brain in test taking mode. It's okay to get out of test taking mode when you're licensed, but until you get licensed, you need to be in test taking mode. Um, this is, this isn't really a tip, but I just, this is kind of a, I feel like I need to say this. Um, cause I, I think, you know, people, we perform, a lot of us perform poorly when, when we're under pressure. There's a lot of anxiety when you take the test. Some people get sick to their stomach. It's okay to take that test more than once, guys. Um, I certainly wouldn't judge you or look down on you if you had to take it more than one time. I've had good friends that have taken taken the test multiple times, and they're good surveyors. They're smart folks. Not everybody's born to be a test taker. And that's okay. And I, if we lived in a different world, we'd have a better way to assess the skill of surveyors. It just this is the this is the rules of the game that we're given. Kind of sucks for people that aren't good at exams. Uh, but like, yeah, you know, don't beat yourself up. You got to take this two or three times to pass. It's okay. It's a really hard test. The LSAT is one of the hardest things I've ever done, except for being married to my crazy wife. Uh, but it's probably like the second hardest thing I've ever done. So take some pressure off, man. You know, work hard, study, but like take some pressure off. It's okay. It's okay if you go in there and you try it the first time and you don't make it. That's all right. It's okay if you don't make it the second time. It's a really hard test. So, take some pressure off. All right, so what are some lessons I learned from the exams? Both the exams, the LSIT and the LS. We talked about this a little bit. Practice every week, practice every week, practice every week. I studied every week for two hours for maybe two years before I passed my LS. You know, if you're, if you're working in a job with a very defined role, you know, maybe you work at a big company and you do the same thing all the time, so... You mostly do elevation certificates, or you mostly do right-of-way surveys, or you mostly do land title surveys, or you mostly do construction staking. Focus your time studying those areas that you don't do at work. Those are the areas that you're going to be weak at. Find a good place to ask questions. Not everybody has a great mentor. I, I was very fortunate. I had a couple of really good mentors. But even with a couple of really good mentors, I still got online and asked questions and learned a lot from my my, my mentors online. The California Land Surveyors Association forum is a great place to go. You can also email me. Professor uh, Galagos has my contact information. I am always happy to email questions. Call me, text me, email me. I'm here for you. I had a lot of help, and I know that you need help, and I need to pay, pay it forward. Find a good place to ask questions. Remember, the exam is not about real life. Uh, I hate to say that. It's hard to write a good exam. I've worked on exam development. It's tough to write good questions. You know, we're doing the, the, the exam folks are doing the best they can. But understand the exam isn't about real life. The answer, correct answer on the test isn't what you all would always do in real life. You have to know the difference. If you go in there to take that exam and you just put down what you think you would do in real life, that can get you into trouble. It's, it's a simulation of real life. So when you're studying, ask questions. There are sometimes answers that you would give on the test that you wouldn't do in real life. You need to know what the differences are. Um, and then my, my last thing is, did I mention you need to study? Like, no, that's really, really important. You have to study regularly, every week, for a year. If you study every week for a year and go take that test, you're going to pass. So, all right. I hope those tips help you guys. Reach out to me if you got other questions. That's it. That's my pearls of wisdom for the exam.